Welcome back to the pregame show. The Rough Riders finishing up a series today with the Springfield Cardinals, and I'm joined by the special assistant to the general manager, Tony Fernandez, who's here in Frisco as the active hitting coach in uh, place of Jason Hart, who's on vacation here the last few days. Uh, a decorated player in his major league time, five-time All-Star, 17 years in the big leagues, and played for seven different major league clubs. We have a lot of guys come through here that are uh, roving instructors, special assistant. We had Pudge Rodriguez here earlier this year. It's always interesting to hear the schedule of somebody like you. Uh, what have the last, say, three or four weeks been like? Uh, have you been around, uh, moving around a lot? Uh, it's been very hard. I mean, I've been, yes, I've been moving around a lot, uh, especially when uh, uh, I would needed to go to AAA to follow uh, Manny Ramirez and uh, Larry Garcia to see how they were doing. And uh, 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 we, uh, we have a few other prospects that I was following out there, like, like Mike Old and so forth so uh sometimes you need to be in those places more often than you expected but i don't mind it i enjoy it how often are you actually stationed uh, back here at the home base in arlington uh, i don't come here as often the, uh, I, I can come here uh every uh three or four weeks uh, if i want to but uh, i choose to be more uh, around the minor league because uh, i think that's what the hope is needed uh, unless unless the gm uh, has a special need uh, for the, on the club, and uh, he wants me to go and work over there. I stay around developing. Well, you really have a lot to bring to the table. Uh, a great hitter in your day, especially in the postseason, but an incredible fielder as well. Your your career, along with your five All Stars, uh, four Gold Gloves. When the Rangers hired you at the beginning of 2012, what was your impression of what? you were going to be asked to do? Has it, has it been as expected? Have, has it kind of changed on the fly? What all are you doing for the minor league organization on the development side and at the big league level? Uh, well, I was expected to mentor the young players, especially the Latin players, uh, at, uh, on and off the field, the, and then assist with the uh, uh, fielding, basically, because that was my strength. And uh, this year I've been asked to, uh, to assist the GM and uh, also keep on mentoring the kids you know, on and off the field, uh, but assist a little bit more in the area, in the area of hitting. So uh, it has fluctuated you know, in, the, in, the, in these couple of years. So let's see what is, what, is, what is next now. Here with Tony Fernandez, a special assistant to John Daniels, the general manager. Uh, here is the acting hitting coach. Talk a little bit about what that is like, coming into an environment that's over 100 games into the season. Jason Hart surely has plans for all these guys how do you come in and, and try to make sure that they don't miss a beat while still bringing your own flair and experience to helping these guys uh, at the plate communication is the key you know I, uh, I had a good conversation with Jason before he left and uh, uh, we agree mainly in uh, in the main thing you know the, the foundation of hitting and uh, what he's doing so what I what I, someone like me would do is is act to it Build on what he has already been laid down as the foundation. You don't you don't deviate too much from there because if you do, then you're going to confuse the players. So so you got to make sure that you stay in the same page and uh, uh, keep on adding a brick to the building. You know, uh, everyone that comes in basically is adding a brick to that building. So does he does he leave a series of notes on each player so that you you, you do know individually uh, what each guy is working on, or is it? more of the larger foundational structure that, that you guys are communicating about? Uh, no, no, he has a short note in each player, you know, and, uh, and then I take it from there. Uh, sometimes, you know, it's, it's better, it's, be it's much better to keep it as simple as possible. Sometimes when you give the young hitters too much information, they get confused and you don't want that. And this is, uh, you've been here a few times this season. Is there anybody that's jumped out as you as someone that's improved a lot since the last time you were here? Well, they have they have uh, quite a few new faces, uh, but uh, you know I try to, like I said, I try to keep my eyes on on everyone, each hitter, and they all bring something different to the plate. And uh, uh, as you know, uh, uh, I've been following Odor and uh, Sardinius because they're middle inferiors uh, since they were in A ball. But uh, I always keep my eyes, you know, in the, in the whole club, and 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 not someone in particular. Although that uh, that's going to happen. You know, through a period of time, you're going to see a, a young player uh, that is going to, is going to uh, stick out. I mean, uh, uh, in the way he's swinging the bat, and uh, I, I like what I'm seeing in few players. And uh, I will, I will write my recommendations based on what I saw so far. And uh, you, you brought up Odor and Sardinas. What do those two guys need to do 
as such young players here at the Texas League, we saw Hanser Alberto here and Odubel Herrera, and both of them had rough patches of the plate, especially Alberto, who was really in a slide before he went down to Myrtle Beach. What's important for those two guys who are very similar ages, if not even younger, especially in Odor's case, to make sure that they can stick at this level? They, they need to understand that the game is going to change uh, somewhat as they go up. But they, need, they need to understand what kind of players they are, what is expected from them, and uh, learn how to create a plan and execute that plan. Those, that, that's what I'm trying to get them to focus on, uh, basically, because at a young age, it's very difficult for them to understand that. Uh, uh, I remember when I played A-ball, and then I went from A-ball to triple A at the age of 18 and 19, and uh, it wasn't easy at the beginning. I really didn't enjoy going to AAA too much. It was a different ball game, and I, from from that experience, I can I can build on, build on, and and, and, and talk to them, and, and basically tell them to try try to make the adjustment as they go. But they have to make adjustments. They need to because at this level, they're going to pitch to them a little bit different. They're going to the pitchers going to make the adjustment. They have scouting reports and so forth. So it's time for them to get the main aspect of the game gone. I mean, get ready uh, because. At this level, I mean, uh, uh, everybody has talent. And, and uh, basically what's going to separate one player from another is, is the manner of preparation, the attitude, the kind of attitude that they take into the game and so forth. And uh, they are good, good listeners. And uh, uh, when you have a teachable mind, it's easy for anyone to teach someone how to improve their game. You talk a little bit about your background. I originally come from the Dominican Republic in San Pedro de Macari, which uh, is an incredible baseball town and, and produced more major leaguers per capita than any other town in the world. What's the state of the game like there now, and, and why is it that, that that environment produced so many great big leaguers, uh, yourself included? Uh, well, uh, ironically, right now uh, there are another regions in the country that are producing as many uh, players uh, as San Pedro used to, uh, or even more. I think the reason that we produce so many players in San Pedro is because we don't have too much uh, distraction. I mean, uh, we don't have too many things to do, too many options. We, <laughs> we go to school and play baseball. That's basically it, and uh, that's not too much to do. Now, when you move to the city, the big city, there's a lot of things to do. You know, too many, too many uh, uh, options, and sometimes it's hard for the young players to focus in one sport when that happened. Part of your work you do outside of baseball, you have your own foundation as well, and you're an ordained minister. Talk a little bit about the work that you do outside of the game and with your foundation. Well, that, that's part of my ministry. Yeah, the foundation has been going on uh, since I played and the last part of my career. And uh, now as a minister, I'm just combining baseball with, with, uh, with, uh, with the ministry aspect of it. And uh, I basically, we basically try to bring education through a sport, uh, uh, with the spiritual component, it's very important for us, you know, to really to cre to cre create the, the foundation for young players or young people. Uh, so, not all of them are going to be professional ball players, and uh, you need you need to to, uh, to really help them to understand that uh, uh, a sm very a very small percentage of players or signees will make it to the big leagues. So you have to really focus on something else as well. But if you teach them about the values of life, I think it makes it much easier for them to play baseball or, or, or take on whatever the lives have for them. Well, it's uh, important work you do. You're a very busy guy. Thanks. I appreciate your time today and uh, good luck in all the work you do, baseball and off the field as well. Thank you so much. It's been my pleasure. That was Tony Fernandez. We'll be back with more here on the Frisco Rough Riders Baseball Network.